To make it short, computing is currently facing big challenges. Elisa pointed out one of them. So on one hand, um, computing in the framework of data deluge has to reduce the cost of energy per operation to allow processing tremendous amount of data and extract the cognitive information. On the other hand, there is a lot of expectations on uh, what computing could actually do, and especially it could help tackle societal and environmental challenges by solving huge and complex problems with numerous variables. And um, that's where quantum computing can help. Because why are we currently limited in terms of problems we can solve? If we stick to classical calculation, the duration of the calculation increases with the size of the problem. Of course, more slow has helped, and thanks to the technological improvement, we've been able to solve bigger problems for a given time. Though, classical uh, computing is still limited, and the promise of quantum computing, thanks to superposition and entanglement, is to provide a speed-up that can be up to exponential, and consequently, it provides access to uncharted territories. To reach these promises and beat current supercalculators, quantum computing needs at least hundreds of perfect qubits. And with these perfect qubits, uh, the com this computing power finds application in transport and logistics with traffic optimization, in healthcare with the opportunity to perform molecular simulation for new drug discoveries. Quantum computing, when, when available, will impact energy and materials, finance, defense, and intelligence. But attention, to fulfill these promises, we really need uh, these hundreds of perfect qubits to be manipulated for millions and even billions of operations. So let's have a look at where we stand currently in terms of hardware. There are several options to fabricate a qubit. Yet, none of them is close to meet the number of qubits together with the quality required to take advantage of the, the quantum algorithms. And um, this is the reason why we are currently baiting on what a quantum computer will be made out of. And this is the reason, this is the time to look at the potential uh, to know at this early stage of the hardware which one is going to perform the best. And to do that, to go to large scale, we look at the dimensions, the speed of operation, the quality of the qubits, their, operation, their temperature of operation, and the technological platform on which uh, they rely. And if we want to be very um, precise, let's now uh, try to answer the question why we believe that silicon qubits uh, is the best option. So looking at the size, we said we need hundreds of perfect qubits, which means millions of physical qubits. And if we look at the size, silicon offers the possibility, thanks to Moore's law, to design very small qubits. Um, it benefits from the maturity of the CMOS industry, but also it shows very good perspective in terms of fidelity, because um, it can rely on isotopically purified 28 silicon, and uh, this allows to design very high-quality qubits with fidelities above the threshold to enable quantum error correction. As compared to superconducting qubits, it relaxes the temperature of operation. It is way smaller than trapped ions and way faster than photons. Its readout speed in the microsecond range allows performing billions of operations, kind of what is required for breakthrough applications. Currently, um, in terms of if we have a look at the state of the art in terms of qubit demonstration in the academic world, uh, we see on the left hand side that um, the qubits resort are designed with many gates to design the qubit. We have taken the first step by designing a qubit with only two gates. It features a 64 nanometer gate pitch and offers a 20 nanosecond manipulation time. 
That's from the quantum chip. Now, if we look at the state of the art from a system perspective, we're still at the stage of a scientific experiment with a lot of wires going out of the racks. In this context, CLAT's ambition is to design a full-stack silicon-based quantum processor unit that will allow to programming and interfacing with the outside world. To do that, we've built a strong industrial and research ecosystem. We have partnered with the Software and System Institute of the and the Fundamental Research Divisions of CA and with CNRS to answer the research question and all along the stack. And we are interfacing with the industrial ecosystem from material and technology providers to end users to speed up the time to market. The core team is located in Grenoble and gathers physicists, mathematicians, integration and device engineers, analog RF and digital circuit designers, system and software architects. Together, all together, we have proposed a path to overcome single qubit layout limitations and to allow large scale control. This proposal has been re rewarded by an ERC Synergy grant. And after a first demonstration of a qubit, we are now targeting six entangled qubit by next year to deliver a prototype of at least 100 qubit by 2024. And looking further ahead, the objective will actually be to deliver a first generation of QPU, quantum processor unit, with integrated quantum error correction. Now, on the road toward large-scale quantum computing, this year we have demonstrated that we can perform single charge sensing in an eight quantum dot array. This development is needed to read out the spin information carried out by the silicon qubit. Thanks to a spin-to-charge conversion, being able to accurately sense charge states allows determining the spin uh, qubit state. We also have in parallel designed a cryogenic circuit operating at 100 millikelvin and uh, integrating analog and, and digital functions. It allows biasing a quantum chip and applying gigahertz modulation to measure the induced current through the device thanks to a low consumption transimpedance amplifier. As I told you, we're working with system architects so that, right from the start, the system is thought in terms of taking advantage of the specificities of the hardware. Uh, for instance, in terms of silicon, we speak about um, the connectivity, the ability to perform fast and parallel gates. And uh, to do that, uh, we are developing a signal treatment chain that will uh, take into account the variability of the of the qubits and will increase the parallelism and allow quantum error correction. And to finish, as a sneak peek in 2021, we plan to provide a first version of a quantum chip controlled by a cryogenic chip. The two chips will be interconnected through a silicon interposer featuring superconducting interconnects. The demonstrator allowed to provide chip biasing and amplification for accurate control and readout. So I tell you, uh, see you next year, and uh, let's follow up of what's happening in 2021. Thank you. <laughs>